Hi everyone. Happy Tuesday. Happy So What Day. I hope you're having a great day so far. Today we're going to be going over this project hanging behind me. It is a football themed table runner. And I started with a quilt pattern and I basically just took a section of that pattern and made a table runner out of it. So I'm gonna be going over some of the techniques that I did for the table runner. And uh, you know, I know it has a football theme. Maybe some of you are not into football, um, but it's upon us. Football is starting, um, the NFL is starting, and with college getting back into full gear, um, there's gonna be some college games coming up and all of that fun stuff. So. Even if you're not into football, I think you'll enjoy the techniques that we're talking about today. And I have some really cute gift ideas for the sports lovers in your life because you could make this for someone else. You could isolate just that little football block and make it into a wall hanging. So there are a lot of different things you can do with a traditional quilt pattern that isn't necessarily a full quilt. Now, if you know someone who is expecting a baby, this would also make a really cute uh, little welcome to the world baby quilt that you could personalize with a name or some fun quilting or machine embroidery, all kinds of things. So uh, you don't just have to make this table runner like I did. You can turn it into any number of projects. So we will talk about that. Um, and it looks rather small because it's really far behind me, but if I roll backwards here, you can see <laughs> it's much larger than it appears. Um, it measures about 15 and a half inches by about 43 or so inches. Um, so it makes it really nice to use just the width of fabric for the backing and then cut it to size for however many blocks you decide to do. All right, so we will go over that. Let's see what else do I have on deck. I mentioned the little gift ideas. Okay, so some of you who come to So What here on Facebook, um, because you receive our emails, you may already know that we have begun talking about our next webcast at sewingonline.sulky.com. I'm really excited about this one because it is garment sewing techniques. And even if that is a little intimidating for you, we are starting out with a simple pattern that you can dress up or down add embellishments to it, keep it plain, but you will learn a lot of techniques. And we have a very, very special guest joining us from So So English Fabrics. Um, if you are a frequent So What watcher, then you are probably familiar with uh, So So English Fabrics because I talk about them all the time. <laughs> they have really fantastic fabrics, especially for garment making. Now, if you are looking for that perfect t-shirt knit or comfy fabric for maybe your DIY lounge wrap, if you are joining us for that summer sewing session, then So So English is the way to go. Um, if you frequent fabric stores, and let's be honest, how many of us out there do not frequent fabric stores? <laughs> If you frequent fabric stores, then you know the challenge of finding great garment fabrics. You know, they really cater towards uh, quilters and crafters. And while that's great, and I love it so much, it is difficult to find really great fabrics that you want to wear and live in. Uh, they may have a selection of knits. I mean, the garment uh, area of my fabric store is like one or maybe two aisles long and that's it. The rest is mostly quilt making, um, uh, flannels, um, licensed prints, things like that, which don't get me wrong, 
I love to sew those as well, but the garment fabrics are few and far between. At Sew Sew English, you can browse so many different knits, terries, linen blends, um, and you know you, it's going to be great quality. Um, I have never been disappointed with a purchase at Sew Sew English, and we're really excited to be partnering with them for our, let me pull it up here, Sulky Perfect Tea webcast. You can register for this webcast for free. It's happening September 14th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And we will be going over how to create your go-to t-shirt using a brand new pattern that SoSo -So English has developed with Sulky. This pattern can be used a million trillion different ways, which when I'm buying a pattern, I like to know that I'm going to get multiple uses out of it, especially if I fit it a little bit to my body. Let's say for this t-shirt, I want to cut the upper half in a size large, and then I want to kind of taper the lower half into a size medium, and I cut out all my pieces. Then I can use that basic block for the main part of the pattern and switch out the sleeves, use a different pocket style cut a different hemline, um, use a different neckline. So you can choose a scoop neck, which is my favorite, um, a V-neck or a regular crew neck tee, like those you would find, you know, at your favorite t-shirt shop. <laughs> at any rate, lots of customization options for this pattern. And uh, we also have kits available. Now, when we kind of concepted this webcast with SoSo -So English, um, you know, it was really, really great chatting with them over the past, oh man, I want to say about six months at least. That's how far ahead we plan our webcasts and video casts because there's just so much involved to bring you all the best content available and really great kits. So for this, you will not need anything else. When you grab this kit, you will have everything you need to create your version of your perfect tee. You can see we have two colorways available in this really, really great knit fabric. It's called MVC, Micro Viscous Cotton. It is that luxurious knit fabric that you find in really high-end t-shirts. It's great to sew. You can use your serger or your standard sewing machine, and it sews like butter, and it feels even better. You can choose from navy or white for your fabric, and you will get a two-yard cut. The two yards is suitable for sizes way down to extra small and way up to 6XL. So it does cover a wide range of sizes, that two yard cut. You will also choose either hand or machine embroidery for the embellishment on your pocket. Because, you know, we can't just have a plain t-shirt. We've got to jazz it up a little bit. And when you sign up for the webcast, you will receive this cute little Mod Geo triangle design, and you will get it in both hand embroidery pattern and machine embroidery design. So you can choose your own adventure with how you want to embroider your pocket. During the webcast, we're going to go over the embroidery instructions for both versions how to create that pocket, and then you will get all the tips, tricks, techniques you need to create a perfect t-shirt. I'm so excited about this one, can you all tell? So please register today. If you register, you will get that free design that I talked about. You can print your hand embroidery design out directly onto Sulky Stick and Stitch, which comes with the hand embroidery kit. It also comes with six spools of thread for either hand or machine embroidery once you choose your embellishment 
adventure. You'll get your needles, your construction thread, different stabilizers depending on the different embellishment techniques you want to do. And you will also get the pattern included when you buy a kit. Now, if you want a different fabric or you want to kind of piecemeal all those elements of the kit your own self, you can pick up just the digital pattern in addition to anything else that you want to purchase. Um, that digital pattern is at uh, sulky.com. And let's see, what else do I need to tell you? Oh, along with those hemline versions, you can see on this pattern, there's also a really cute tie version of that shirt. So a little trendy option for you as well. And you know, a t-shirt is good winter, spring, summer, and fall. Let's be real. Because it's a great layering, you know, uh, garment. So if you haven't ever sewn a garment before, this is the webcast for you because I think it's really going to push your fears aside and give you the confidence needed to create a simple t-shirt. Um, you know, when you are working with that base pattern, you're really just sewing up those side seams and your shoulder seams. Then it's a matter of putting in your sleeves and choosing your neckline and sewing your hem. So break it down into these easy steps that we're going to go through during the webcast and you'll have a fantastic t-shirt. And again, a pattern you can use over and over again. What I love about a t-shirt pattern is you can also lengthen it even down to the floor if you want a t-shirt dress. You simply elongate the pattern and uh, make it a little bit wider around your hips and kind of fan it out towards the floor. So a lot you can do with this really simple versatile pattern. And again, join us for the webcast. It's completely free to attend on September 14th. And I'm really looking forward to it. You will meet the So So English um, mastermind, the founder, Amanda Carita of So So English. And you know, learn from some of the best in the business. So, all right, that's my spiel about our next webcast. And I hope you all take advantage and go register. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, I believe I forgot to put the link to register for the webcast in today's description. So we will make sure to put that in the chat today. And I will uh, update the description of today's post after we're live. Uh, to make sure that that registration link is in there. I'm actually going to make a note to myself so I don't forget because I forget these things. Um, to the perfect T webcast. All right. Okay, what size does the pattern go up to? That is a great question and... I think I know the answer, but I'm just going to double check uh, so that I don't make a mistake. I think it goes all the way up to a 10XL. Um, I am actually cutting mine out right now. Um, I taped it all together. It is a digital pattern only. So you have to print out all of your pages and then cut out the size that best corresponds to your body measurements. Now. The pattern comes in three different printable versions. If you want, you can put the pattern on a thumb drive and take it to a printing place and they can print it out for you on large sheets so that you can just cut it out and you don't have to bother with taping together all the sheets. Also, take a look at the PDF before you print out your pages because since there are so many different versions, you may only want to print a selection of page numbers. Um, for example, there are like, I want to say around 50 pages to the pattern to tape together. And I know that sounds like a lot, but I believe I only had to print out about 17 or 18 of those for the version I was going to make. And that included, you know, that base pattern as well as the sleeves I chose. And then for the neckband, I'm actually just going to draw that um, onto some of my extra paper sheets um, because I didn't want to have to print out six pages just to get the neckline that I wanted. So 
You don't have to print every single page of that pattern. If you take it to a, a printer place to print on larger paper, um, they will print the whole thing for you. And then you will have those other versions that you can kind of save and roll up and return to when you want to create a different version of that pattern. Um, so there are also, uh, if you're printing on a home printer, you want to make sure to print the eight and a half by 11 version of the pattern and print it at a hundred percent. Okay. So if any of you are buying the pattern prior to the webcast, um, or getting the kit that has the pattern in it, just know those things. If you're going to try and print it out prior to the webcast, which is not necessary. It's not a traditional sew along. Um, it's really informational. And then you can take what you learned um, with you and refer back to it at any time when you're creating your garment. Okay, sizes of the pattern. I just want to be sure I'm getting this correct. Okay. Um, hold please. I don't know why it's taking me so long. I believe it goes up to a 10 XL. Um, but just a moment. I want to be sure there is a really great wide, um, size range to it. And all of so, so English patterns, um, are like that. So I really love that about them is they're very, um, sort of all inclusive, with their sizing. Okay, I apologize that this is taking me forever. Um, it's just that my computer is not as organized as it should be. And so it takes me a while to find the things that I'm looking for. Okay. Um, sorry, hold on. <laughs> I also have these um, saved and very odd places. Okay. Bear with me. Now it doesn't want to open. Okay. Um, to my sulky support, <laughs> if you could look at the pattern, please, and let me know the size range. Oh, here we go. Okay. So sorry for the delay. I'm actually pulling up the pattern itself so I can be sure and tell you because there are a lot, a lot of sizes here. Okay, we have extra, extra small all the way up to 10XL. So um, lots of size options for you all. I apologize that that took me so long. I just wanted to really make sure um, I've only been looking at the paper pattern for like three days while I'm laying it out. Uh, so, <laughs> okay, there we go. Barbara says, did I miss it? What is the price for the kit? That is a great question because the kit is already on sale for the webcast and it is $49.99, whether you get the handwork kit or the machine embroidery kit in either color. And as you know, that luxurious fabric alone um, is pretty pricey. So this is an outstanding price for this kit, $49.99 on sale until the night of the webcast on September 14th at midnight. You will get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spools of sulky thread, a pack of organ needles. You may get two packs if you get the machine embroidery version. If you get the handwork version, you'll get a pack of hand embroidery needles. Uh, you get two stabilizers with your kit as well. One is tender touch, which is applied after your embroidery is complete on the wrong side of your embroidery. When you're embroidering on knits, um, it's recommended to use a cutaway stabilizer. And that is because, you know, knits are so stretchy and with all those needle penetrations you're creating with your embroidery, you want that extra reinforcement when your embroidery is complete. So we apply tender touch at the very end after our embroidery, and that acts as sort of a sealant to our embroidery stitches on the wrong side, but it 
also acts as like a fusible interfacing, which will help stabilize our pocket while we're wearing and washing and all of those good things on our t-shirt. So our t-shirt won't sag and kind of fall open like a lot of purchased t-shirts will do. We'll have that nice uh, tender touch inside of those layers and it just makes for a beautiful pocket over time. And you can see it on this image here. Look how nice that pocket sits on the shirt. So, and Tender Touch is so lightweight and it has that silky quality that the fabric does. So no matter if you get a hand embroidery or machine embroidery version of the kit, you will get a pack of Tender Touch. And then for machine embroidery, you will be getting Soft and Sheer Extra for the embroidery itself. And for hand embroidery, you will be getting Stick and Stitch. Stick and Stitch is our sticky wash away stabilizer that comes in printable sheets. You will put that on the fabric right side, sew through all layers, and then wash it away when your embroidery is complete. Let your fabric dry, then you'll apply that tender touch to the wrong side. It's I'm giving away the webcast here, but you will learn lots more techniques and a lot about using your serger or your sewing machine to construct the actual garment. Okay, $49.99 retail price of that kit is $76.99. So that's a really great savings on the kit and be sure to grab one up before the webcast uh, so that you get that really, really good price. All right, let's get to the project at hand. Oh, Kathy says, sounds like a very versatile pattern. It is. I think you guys will really enjoy it. Okay. Um, I missed where you get the pattern. Would you repeat that, please? The pattern is available at sulky.com, and it is a digital pattern. So if you're buying the pattern alone, there's a little option that you can click for your payment that says, um, I believe it says something like digital product. Um, and that way you can get your digital pattern pretty immediately after you purchase it. If you combine this with physical goods, like a thread pack or stabilizer pack or something that needs to be mailed to you, there is a slight delay in getting your digital pattern. Um, and that's just because we're kind of trying to sync up your digital purchase with your physical purchase. So bear with us on that. But if you are just buying the pattern, it's uh, at sulky.com. You can select that digital only purchase button and you'll get it relatively immediately in your account at sulky.com. Now, please note that sulky.com is a different website from our education platform, which is sewingonline.sulky.com. I know it is confusing, but uh, we pretty much have to have a second website for our education offerings so that we can bring you this live streaming video instruction and all kinds of interactivity. Um, we can't kind of cross the streams with your purchases for product and your purchases for virtual events. So I hope that makes sense. You will need two different accounts, one for sulky.com and one for sewingonline.sulky.com. You can use the same username and password if you like because they are two different entities, but keep that in mind. Okay. And yes, just, just to be clear on the digital patterns versus the kit project, or excuse me, versus the kit products, all that good stuff. So you don't get your digital download immediately because we can't charge you for your physical items until those ship. So that is the reasoning for that if you combine a digital product with a physical good. So again, I'm getting really in the weeds here telling you all about this, but I just want to try to explain this to all of you so that there's no frustrations with your order. Okay. Just know we're really trying our best to bring you um, to bring you the, the best, the best. Okay. Let me make sure there aren't any more questions about the t-shirt. Um, Sue says, I haven't made clothes in eons, 
might have to get on board and buy the kit is a serger used for the seams. So you can use a serger or your standard sewing machine to construct the shirt. Um, with knits, I love using my serger. Um, it's just so quick and easy and you don't have some of the same challenges with the fabric stretching as you sew it. Um, however, uh, using a wash away stabilizer um, along your seams or really just making sure that your fabric is not hanging off of the machine bed while you're sewing it. You can also try using a walking foot on a standard sewing machine when you're sewing with knits and the walking foot feeds your fabric layers through the machine at the same rate because you've got your presser foot holding it from the top and the walking foot is grabbing it from the from underneath and so as it's creating a stitch it's kind of sandwiching the fabric and moving it along and creating a stitch sandwiching and moving it along that's what a walking foot will do to you will do for you <laughs> so you can try using that when sewing with knits as well on your standard sewing machine um, if you happen to have a serger I do recommend using it for garments, especially knit fabrics or stretchy fabrics. Um, so pull out that serger, give it a go. If you haven't used your serger in a while, um, or if you really want to get more use out of your serger, we also have a serger sewing session that is starting on September 27th. Now I say starting, but this is an on-demand sewing session that you can take, or excuse me, that you can add to your library. And on September 27th, all the content goes live. There are videos and printables and patterns and ancillary materials and posts from the instructor, downloadables, all kinds of stuff. This is a really comprehensive sewing session um, much like our summer sewing sessions that we offered this summer. So if you want some extra serger education, if you are looking to buy a serger, but you're not sure it's right for you, this would be a session for you as well, because there are serger buying guides you can print out and fill out when you're on your quest for looking for a serger and trying to compare models and things. You will learn about the anatomy of a serger, what things are called and how to use them. Plus, there are some serge as you go projects that we have kitted up so you can practice all the techniques that you learn in the session and make some beautiful home decor. So this has a lot of com components to it. And while you are registering for the free webcast with So So English, you can also add the serger sewing session to your library. And then when that one is activated on September 27th, you will have access to all of that. It will be in your library. All of those downloadables, printables, etc., are there forever stored in your library. If you want to go in and watch all of the videos at once, you certainly may. If you want to um, sort of schedule out your sewing time or schedule out your um, learning, if you will, we have divided this sewing session into six sections so that you can get through one, go back to it in a couple weeks, go through the next one, depending on your time and how much you want to do per day, etc. So I really like how these are broken up into manageable chunks so that you can decide how you want to learn. You can be right next to your serger and watch this on your phone, your tablet, your computer. So it's really, really great information. Katrina Walker is our instructor for the serger sewing session. She has done a serger webcast with us in the past. And after we did that webcast, we got a lot of feedback for people wanting more, more, more serger content. So I compiled all of that feedback and put it together to really create a session that included everything else that everyone wanted to learn and then some. So 
I really think you'll enjoy this. Be sure to add this one to your library as well when you register for um, our webcast with So So English. All right, so I was going to save all of that for the end, but it just seemed so appropriate to go through it first <laughs> because I got talking about webcasts and then the serger segue was just there. Okay, Esther says she just registered. That is fantastic. Um, Mary Ellen says, thanks for the webcasts. They are so helpful when you live in rural areas. Yes, you know, if you can't get out to a physical class or to your dealer for classes or there are COVID restrictions in your area, virtual events are the way to go. Not to mention, you know, you can watch them on your own time. If you can't join us for the live So So English webcast at 2 p.m. on September 14th, register anyway because the free content will be in your library and you can take it as you have time or watch it as you have time and you will still get those free downloads. I will say when we do a free webcast, we have door prizes during the event. So anyone attending live is eligible for a door prize. We pick the winners as we go along and it's a fun time to spend with fellow sewists and connect with each other. But if you aren't able to attend live, register anyway and get that free content, grab up those freebies, try the embroidery designs, and you know, you'll still have a really great experience and get all of that great information on demand. Okay. All right. Anne says, what do you print your pattern on? So I use just regular printer paper, just regular computer paper, print it out. Um, a lot of the times I will just print it on the draft setting um, so that I don't use a ton, a ton of ink when I'm printing out paper patterns. Um, but if you, if you have a hard time seeing the draft um, or the lowest ink setting for your printer, just print it at full blast. Um, like I said, you can take a thumb drive of your pattern. Um, sometimes, depending on where you're printing it out, they will want proof that you purchased it. Um, so you can always say, you know, I purchased this pattern. I want to print it out here. And there you have it. Uh, you can either have them print it out for you on all the pages and then go home and tape them together. And that way you're not using up your ink. They charge you a nominal fee per page. Um, or you can find a printer that will print it all on a large sheet of paper that you can then cut out. And those are really great for preserving your pattern for future use uh, because you won't have, you know, areas where you haven't placed tape that kind of curl up or um, can get caught on things over time. So a couple of different options for printing. Okay, just trying to get caught up on the comments here and then we'll move forward with our football table runner. Okay, a lot of people excited about that t-shirt, so. Um, and the serger class, so that is great. We also have a kit for the serger session. Um, it is called the Jelly Roll Home Decor Kit. Um, with purchase of the sewing session, you will receive the Jelly Roll Home Decor Pattern. It is a pattern that includes instructions for a table runner or a set of pillows, and you construct them in the same surge as you go method that you will learn during the session, but you can decide, do I want a table runner? Do I want a pillow set? Or you could even break that up and create some beautiful placemats as well. And the kit that we're offering will make a couple of those projects. You will get enough fabric, thread, needles to make either the whole table runner or the set of pillows or a pillow and a couple of placemats, things like that. So you'll get a beautiful jelly roll that is made of Robert Kaufman Kona cotton, um, my favorite cotton fabric, really nice quality. And the jelly roll has kind of holiday colors to it. It's got creams, reds, and shades of green. So you can make a really Christmassy looking uh, table runner or pillow set, or you can use 
all the shades of red and make a really beautiful red one, all the shades of green, or you can mix the greens with the creams. So you can really mix and match and make this project your own using that same kit. That kit is also at a discounted price for registrants of the session. So keep that in mind too. You can grab that kit as well as your t-shirt kit. You'll have both things ready to go. Combine them into one purchase and get free shipping. So all kinds of things going on. The Christmas jelly roll is awesome. So perfect. Colleen just got her kit for the serger webcast. So that is great. And really want to use my serger more. This class could help me get going. You know, I have used a lot of different serger brands in my career and I never really feel like I fully get the most out of it. Um, there's just so much to learn and so many cool effects you can achieve with your serger. Um, you don't have to use serger thread either. You can use 30 weight cotton blendables thread and make exposed seams on a unlined wool jacket. And that would be really neat. You know, when you open up your jacket, there are these beautiful blended colorful seams that show up. Um, you can, you know, I have one serger that I only use, I've only ever used a four thread overlock stitch. That's it. But a lot of sergers have wave stitches and, uh, you'll learn about flat lock stitches and how to use those in a decorative way as well as a functional way. So there are a lot of different things you can do with your serger. We're also going to take the fear out of threading your serger, which I know is a big thing for people. A lot of people will keep the same thread in their serger until it runs out because they just don't want to go through the process of threading those loopers, getting out the magnifying glass and the tweezers and all that good stuff. If you're lucky enough to have an air threading serger model, we will also go through basically the mechanics of that. You could see how it works. Some people also fear the air threader. So we're going to try and take away all of those fears for you and get you a little bit more comfortable using that machine and using it for more things. Okay. Cecilia says, my serger is so old, rarely used, and maybe this will bring it out. So good. I hope that that um, is the same for everyone. Okay, let's get to the project at hand today, which is this really cute football table runner behind me. Uh, let's see, it features this thread palette that we have at sulky.com. It is so cute. It is called Neutrals and Nutshells. Don't you love that? This is 12 spools of our highest quality 50 weight cotton thread. You can see you get black, white, cream, grays, taupes, browns, all of those great neutrals that you're going to use for a lot of different projects. I used this thread for all the piecing for this table runner. And then for the quilting, I chose a 30 weight cotton blendables thread. I'll show you that momentarily. But today's giveaway for one lucky viewer who is watching So What right now and liking and commenting and sharing and putting your questions in the comments below, you are automatically eligible to win this Neutrals and Nutshells palette. So give me all the likes, all the shares, all the loves, all the emojis, um, even those sad and angry emojis. I'll take those too because you know what? We all have those days. <laughs> all right. So this is our giveaway today. Like I said, I used it for all the piecing of this project as well as sewing on the binding. I always like to sew my binding on um, by hand, my final binding stitch along the backside of my quilty projects. So I just chose one of the brown colors that matched my binding. And then for all the piecing, I went with a more cream kind of neutral from this palette. You can also use this thread for the quilting and you can swap out your colors based on the fabric colors that you choose. But I just thought this was a really great 
palette for sort of all kinds of football or sports themed projects that you might have in your sewing queue. So that's what I'm highlighting today for the giveaway. Okay, so this table runner started from this really cute pattern. Cluck Cluck Sew, if you are not familiar with Cluck Cluck Sew, they have really cute pieced quilt patterns. And this one, I read the entire blog post that she posted for this, and she said it was kind of a happy accident. It started out as kind of a joke for some reason, and then it became a new baby quilt. So that is why she chose kind of these softer blues and green colors um, for, you know, an upcoming baby shower gift. So really, really cute idea. And I thought, hey, with football coming up, and, you know, you could use this all fall long up until the big game in February. And you can definitely find fabrics that feature your favorite team at your local fabric store. Um, I actually had trouble finding fabrics that were sort of football team neutral, if you know what I mean. Because, you know, Chances are, wherever you live, they're very proud of their football teams, and you can find a lot of licensed fabrics for your favorite team. So you can use that for your background fabrics for your pieced footballs or for your uh, pieced border sections as well, or for the backing of your quilt, or you can kind of go more neutral um, and find some footballs, that type of thing. Or in this example on her uh, touchdown pattern, uh, these are just a mix of solids and blenders. So no football um, motifs on the fabrics at all. So you can really just do what you like for uh, your quilty table runner. So basically what I did was I took three football blocks and then four border strips, and created a table runner just out of that. The beauty of table runners is they can be as wide or as long as you want or need them to be. So you can do one with four footballs and just take one section of this pattern. Uh, you get the idea. If you have a super long table, you can make five or six football blocks um, and just add the borders as needed. Um, on the Sulky blog, I link to this pattern as well as give you all of the new uh, cutting dimensions and yardage requirements for just the table runner. So instead of buying this pattern and having to do all those calculations, I have done that work for you on the Sulky blog. So in the description of today's post, you will find that link to the blog post if you want to make this exactly like you see it uh, or, you know, make this version, I should say, and then change up the fabrics to suit your tastes. All the dimensions um, for the fabrics that you need are in that blog post, as well as, again, the link to the pattern. All right, so the first thing you need to do with this pattern is piece together those center sections of the football, so the laces. And I got to say, it's a little difficult to get these exactly perfect. You will see in the bottom left corner of this image that I put on the screen, um, a little bit of thread poking out from where um, we had to rip out some seams and redo them. So, you know what? don't get down. Um, some helpful tips are, first off, of course, very accurate cutting. Using a rotary cutting system, meaning a rotary cutter, mat, and ruler. We have a great rotary cutter at sulky.com that is one of my favorites to use, um, and it's colorful, so I like that. But accurate cutting, as well as accurate seam allowance. Now, you can definitely use your uh, throat plate and refer to the markings on your throat plate and butt up your fabric edge with that, but sometimes that's not even as accurate as it needs to be. You can use a quarter inch foot 
which has a little rudder on the side of the presser foot where you can butt your fabric edge up against it and have a really accurate seam allowance every time. If you have a laser light on your sewing machine, be sure to engage it and you can make sure you're sewing a straight seam. Always look at your presser foot when you're sewing or your seam allowance line rather than watching the needle create the stitches. Um, I think that's a very good point for beginners. We always want to watch the needle and see what it's doing, um, but that makes it really easy to veer off course if you're always watching the needle going up and down rather than watching the edge of your fabric and where it's hitting, okay? All right, so quarter inch foot, really great tip. Esther agrees. Um, but you know what? If you have to rip some of these out and re-sew them to make sure that your sections of your laces uh, are perfect, then no big. Get a really great seam ripper, make friends with it, uh, that's all I can suggest. I was going to show you one of my favorite seam rippers and normally it's right next to me. Oh, here it is. And I know you're all going to ask me where I got this. Um, and I wish I knew. It is a Dritz seam ripper and it's an ergonomic seam ripper. It has this really wide um, body to it. And... I don't know, It's I've made friends with this one. So get a really great seam ripper. That one that comes with your sewing machine is probably too small and chintzy and you may not like it so much. So find one that's cute, make friends with it. And you know what? We all have to rip out seams and it's no biggie. So I just wanted to call out the mistakes here because you know, we all make them and the other thing is just go with it. If you know, it's, it's football laces. You could see on this one, that top white strip is not as wide as the lower strip and that's okay. No one's going to know, but you, no one is going to pick apart your beautiful table runner and say, Hey, why isn't that lace the same width as the others? Right? So at the end of the day, you do you. If you need to rip this out and redo it and make sure that yours are perfectly straight, by all means. Or go with it. Okay. So I wanted to also show you the back of this table runner. So in the pattern, she recommends not choosing a directional print uh, for the backing of your footballs, um, you know, the background, I should say. Um, or even for your border strips. Um, and that's really just to get the most out of your fabric and not have a lot of waste uh, because you're going to need extra if you have a directional print. So when I first purchased this fabric for the backing and the background of my footballs, I thought it was not a directional print, but Upon closer examination, it most definitely is a directional print because it's got the uh, numbers on it, you know, for the field. So that made piecing together the back a little bit more challenging. Um, but again, just go with it. Nobody's going to pick apart your table runner. The other thing I like about this is you could put a totally different fabric print on the back of this. And it could be not even football themed at all. And then after football season, you simply turn it over and you have an entirely different table runner to take you through to the next season. If you so choose, you know, it's a dual duty home decor item if you chose that. Now, if you are doing that, then you probably don't want to go with a really cute football long arm quilting design. Oops, that's my bond binding. Wanted to go back to this. You can see this quilting design has little footballs and little swirls on it. Adorable. Now for this quilting, I was originally just going to go with the 58 cotton thread, but after I found this uh, 
digitized football quilting design, uh, which is at my long arm quilters studio. I don't know what design or machine this is from. I apologize. But once I saw this in her catalog, I thought I have to use a 30 weight blendable so that the thread is really pronounced and you can really see these little footballs all across the table runner. Now you of course can quilt this however you like and I give some different options in the blog post. You can do your own free motion quilting, you can quilt in the ditch of your football seams and use that 50 weight cotton or you can take this to your long armor and bring your spool of thread like I do and choose a really cute football design you can do an end-to-end -end quilting design. Um, designs by Juju has really great end-to-end -end machine embroidery quilting designs that you can choose from as well. But at any rate, once I saw that, I decided to go for a 30 weight cotton blendables um, and just so, so cute. All right, so I did mention binding. Now, say what you will, for this table runner, I used pre-made bias binding. Oh, I know, it's so unlike me. Usually I like to use a really colorful binding um, or, you know, make my own. It's so easy to make your own binding from, uh, even from your stash, because you can piece together your bias strips and get a lot of strips out of a small piece of fabric, even if it doesn't seem like it. Um, but honestly, for this, I had a bunch of just a neutral brown double fold bias binding on hand. And I thought I'm going to use it up on this project. So that's why I went with it. You of course can do whatever kind of binding you like, but I wanted to show you, uh, first off my trusty wonder clips. We have these in this new small size at sulky.com. And let me show you here's kind of the standard size of wonder clip. And then here is the little mini size. Love it. The minis come with a container, um, which I'm using for all of my Wonder Clips now. So it comes with a little storage container if you get the minis. And I mean, love my Wonder Clips. Anyway, so I'm showing you that in this picture, as well as I have that little laser light on, on my machine. And I just line that up with the folds in my pre-made binding and just sew along that first fold line and it is perfection. Very helpful little tips. All right. So there is my finished table runner. I mean, obviously it's also hanging behind me. And funny enough, you know, if, if you frequently watch So What, then a couple of weeks ago, I had a table runner hanging behind me, a different one. And I thought to myself, how have I never thought to use a table runner as a wall hanging? I mean, why not? Right? So maybe you don't even have um, a table suitable for a longer table runner like this, but this looks really pretty hanging over a piano or a like behind the sofa table. Um, so think outside the box. Another thing I did, <laughs> which is kind of silly. Oh, I went to the wrong picture, but here you can really see that 30 weight blendables on the table runner. And there is the thread I use for the piecing and binding as well as that 30 weight blendables in all of those shades of green and brown and gray. And it just tied the whole thing together. And I love those little football motifs in the quilting design. Um, but you can see how that thread really, really pops and adds just another design element to the finished table runner or quilt. Um, but here is a picture I was gonna show you. I just draped it over a chair and, um, you know, putting this over the back of a couch, something like that, you know, it doesn't have to be a table runner and it doesn't have to be a full quilt in order to be a pretty design element 
in your home. So just wanted to show you that as well. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that I'm keeping up on the comments. Anne uses blendables all the time. They're really unique. The blendables thread changes color every two and a half to five inches across the thread length. So it's completely randomized when it changes color. If you're used to different brands of variegated thread, those are very methodically dyed. And if you do straight line quilting, um, sashiko work, things like that, you'll get the same variation of color across the length of thread. Whereas with blendables, it's totally randomized. So it's a really, really neat thread and no other thread is like it. Really, really nice. Cindy just used the blendables on quilted placemats. Cheryl loves the blendables for quilting. I'm telling you, if you haven't tried them, uh, they're really amazing. And we have them in 12 weight as well as 30 weight cotton. So you can get them in a really, really thick thread, the 12 weight, or sort of the mid range, which is the 30 weight thread. Okay. Need to try the Wonder Clips. I am telling you, if you have not grabbed up some Wonder Clips, add them to your cart at sulky.com. We have them in that larger size as well as the mini Wonder Clips, um, which are my new favorites, especially for corners. Um, anyway, I digress. Okay. Sharon says, I love the random coloring of the blendables. Looks so good. That's a really neat face mask. Is that a batik? I like it. Okay. Anne says, I use the blendables to make butterflies for my daughter's memorial service. Oh, so sweet. Esther says, I just use the 30 weight blendables to embroider flower sack dish towels. Yeah, if you're embroidering by hand, especially that 12 weight cotton blendables, really, really pretty. We've also featured those in some cross stitch designs and tutorials in the past. Um, so really, really cool. Ella's making a list for things to try. <laughs> Blendables, Wonder Clips, 50 weight cotton. Add those to your list. Okay. So speaking of football, these are some really fun gifts you can make for the littles in your life or even kids going off to college. I know it may sound silly, but personalize something from home. Um, something with their college team embroidered on it. You can find a lot of licensed machine embroidery designs um, or even Etsy sellers sometimes have great embroidery designs that feature different college teams. That would be a cool thing to put on here for um, somebody off to college um, or even high school if they got on the varsity team or something like that. You could personalize this with their name in machine embroidery as well as their team name or their mascot. This would be a really great, um, you know, birthday gift for a little, little kid, or even to go along with, let's say you made this full quilt for a baby shower, make this to go with it, with a name and maybe birth date embroidered on it. Such a great idea. So this is actually an embroidery blank and it's at sulky.com. We have a number of sports themed little embroider buddy pillows for you to choose from. And I'll show you some different sports versions as well, but I'm just starting off with this football. So since it's an embroidery blank, it is specifically made to be hoopable or to fit in your embroidery hoop. And I will show you how we do that because we don't actually secure this in the hoop. We're going to secure it to the stabilizer that we put in the hoop. Um, and I call this technique hoopless embroidery. Yes, we're using a hoop, so it's not really hoopless, but that's just what I call it, okay? So since it's an embroidery blank and meant to be machine embroidered by the home sewer, it has this very large zipper on the back. All of the innards come out, which here's our little insert in the football pillow. And now, we can really get in here 
and secure it in our hoop. So I am going to show you just how to do that. Now, if you grab up one of these Embroider Buddy sports pillows, you're going to need to make sure that you also purchase Sulky Sticky Plus Stabilizer as well as Sulky Solvi Stabilizer. Solvi is what we're going to put on top as a topper because this has um, almost like a velveteen feel to it. So this fabric has a little bit of a nap. If we don't put Solvi over the top before we do our machine embroidery, the stitches could kind of sink into that fabric pile and we won't be able to read or see what we've embroidered. Or those little fibers of the nap of the fabric could get between stitches almost looking like it's frayed, but it's really just the fabric texture. So that Solvi tames those fabric fibers makes it so everything is flat and you wanna kind of brush it in the correct direction, in the direction it wants to go to make sure all those fibers are going in the same way before putting your Solvi on top. Embroider the design. Then the Solvi, Solvi kind of gets a little perforated. You can tear away most of it. Anything that's left, you can take a wet Q-tip or cotton swab, run it along the stitching where it's, where that Solvi is still there and it will dissolve completely in water. Okay, so that's the topper. But for the embroidery stabilizer itself, what you're hooping, we are using the Sulky Sticky Plus. Sticky Plus is a adhesive backed tearaway stabilizer. So I put it in my hoop with the paper side facing up you will see the little logo, the little Sulky Sticky Plus printed on there. You'll also notice it has a grid. This grid will help you place your football or your other embroidery blank in the hoop. So what we're also going to want to get, and I know some of you have this already, is a Sticky Plus slitting pen. This pen is a really great tool to have with your machine embroidery notions. It has a really sharp point to it, and we use it to score the paper within the embroidery hoop so that we can peel it away and reveal the adhesive underneath. This tip is sharp enough to go through that paper backing, but it doesn't go through the stabilizer itself. So you won't have problems with slicing through the entire stabilizer. Because if I go to use the tip of scissors or a pin to score this, I run the risk of cutting all the way through and then I've got to rehoop a new piece of stabilizer. So that either gets wasted or I can only use it as a patch for another design or for a smaller hoop. So this slitting pen is really God's gift for hoopless embroidery. Um, I can't say enough good things about it because I have gone through my stabilizer more times than I can count. The other thing this allows you to do is get really accurate up against those lines, the grid lines, okay? So you can place your football and kind of use those lines to line up along your center points of your hoop. You can also definitely use a plastic hoop template to give you those cross marks and then you can make a uh, you can draw along your cross marks within your template and peel away the stabilizer corners along that center line and then apply your football or other embroider buddy to just that section you're going to embroider. So I'm going to show you just how easy it is to use this slitting pen and I'm going to give myself a little bit of a border and go just along some of those grid lines. And you can hear that it's perforating that fabric, or perforating the paper, and it has not gone through to the back side. So now I have uh, done a rectangle, and I'm just going to kind of go from corner to corner so that I can lift up a corner of the paper 
and reveal that adhesive. So here we go. Getting it started can be a little bit challenging, but then it kind of just wants to go. So see how easy it is to take that paper backing off with our slitting pen? It's pretty clean along that line. So now I have my sticky surface. You can see it's tacky. And that's what we're going to stick our football to. So we're kind of going to take our football and turn it inside out. Now, I would mark on here where I want my design to go using some kind of removable marker, or I can use a little bit of sticky Fabrisolvi and make a little X in the middle of my design, something like that to let me know where I need to hoop this and how to center it on my hoop. But for purposes of this demo, imagine I have done that. So I turn my football inside out. I still have access to the front side. I'm going to center the area that I'm gonna embroider. Let's pretend I'm just doing a name or something. And then I'm going to stick it directly onto my hoop making sure I don't have any folds. And now my football is ready to be embroidered. Now, I obviously do not want any of this area getting caught on my machine arm. So you wanna stay with your little football during the stitch out because essentially you're embroidering kind of in a tube, right? And some of your stitches you might be embroidering blindly, meaning you can't really see what the needle is doing, but as long as your machine arm um, is staying clear of this other area, and you might need to stop and start the design to kind of push a different area of the pillowcase out of your way during the stitch out, but this is a pretty large area for your machine to move around. So now that I have this secured in the hoop, and you can see I have this almost upside down and it is sticking, it's on there. I don't need the addition of basting stitches or anything. It is stuck to that sticky plus. It's so great. So now I've got this in here and I need my Solvi on top. So Solvi is our water soluble stabilizer that I'm using as a topper here. So you just take don't need a very big piece. We'll just take a little rectangle of the Solvi and we're going to place it over the part that's going to be embroidered. Now, how does it stay there, you ask? Well, you can wait until you have your hoop on the machine and then just float your Solvi between your fabric and your presser foot and start your design. And those stitches, as it starts, will secure the Solvi in place. Or you can actually spray the backside of your Solvi with a little KK2000 and put it directly onto your project. You want to spray the Solvi rather than spraying the project itself. And no, it's not going to dissolve from the Solvi because you're just going to give it a light spritz. That is really all you need to secure it. So I have my KK on the back of the Solvi and I'm just going to position it on my football. And there you have it. My Solvi is attached. My football is attached to my hoop and you're just going to put it on your machine and begin the design. So it's not as difficult as it may seem to create these really, really cute gift ideas. So again, in stock, we have the football. We also have a soccer ball. My kids are starting soccer next week already. Um, so you might have a soccer fan in your house. We also have these really cute hockey pucks. This is the top view of the hockey puck and then the side view. So this one you could embellish the top, let's say with your favorite hockey team, and then personalize around that um, 
sort of border strip or around the width with a name or a date, you know, these also make kind of cute wedding gifts. So if you know a couple that maybe they met um, or they love the same sports team, you can embroider their wedding date on the side and then their favorite team on the top, maybe their new name. Um, and that would be a really great little newlywed gift as well. We also have these baseballs, lots of room for embellishment on either side of the baseball pillows. And then we have basketballs as well. So we've pretty much covered the sports area here. So I think you guys will really have fun with these projects. Really quick and easy gift ideas. And it looks like, you know, you really spent a lot of time um, creating this personalized gift. But really... Honestly, a quick and easy kind of addition to something like a table runner or a quilt gift. And it kind of just adds a little more personalization um, to it. So something really cute and fun to create as a gift. Okay. All right. Lots of people loving the KK2000. And the Sticky Plus as well. Uh, Scotty says, would you put the name above the laces on the football or below? Um, you know, I think it's just a matter of personal preference. I think it could go anywhere because there's ample room on either side of the laces. Um, I would probably put it above, well, I mean, perspective is another thing, right? So it's either above and below or it's the left side or it's the right side. Um, so I think it's just entirely up to you. You could also orient this vertically and do a name that kind of is up and down on either side. Maybe you have, you know, a kid with two first names or first and middle. Um, maybe it's, you know... Uh, how can I not even think of one right now? Maybe it's Leanne and you have Lee on one side and Anne on the other. Something like that would be cute. Um, also, I think it's just really cute to put the name of the college, you know, your kid is attending um, or something like that, you know, or go Tigers or something if they're part of the, you know, Tigers football team at school. Um, so lots of different options. And again, check out those licensed designs that sometimes you can find um, with those Etsy designers or even on some um, bigger embroidery company websites. Um, they might have those as well. Or a little mascot would be cute too if, you, if your team is the Bulldogs or something. I'm sure you could find the face of a Bulldog um, to put on your cute little soccer ball or your football or even your baseball. So I hope you all are enjoying that. And I, I saw from some that you couldn't really see what I was doing with the stabilizer. Um, so I hope you get the gist of it. Um, if you are craving some more in-depth sewing tutorials, be sure to check out all of our webcast and video cast and sewing session, session offerings. Those are at sewingonline.sulky.com. And for our video casts and our sewing sessions, we offer multi-camera views of what we're doing. So here with the So What, where I'm just talking to you and we're chit-chatting, um, it is a little bit more difficult to see every single thing that I'm doing. So if you are craving more instruction, longer format sewing sessions and demos, you can head on over to our education site and get lots, lots, lots more of that in a lot of different um, sewing disciplines. So quilting, hand embroidery, cross stitch, garment sewing. Uh, there's, you know, lots and lots of bag tutorials as well. So there's something for everyone over at sewingonline.sulky.com. All right. Where do you find the table runner pattern for the footballs? So the table runner pattern is actually part of a larger quilt pattern. I started with this quilt pattern from Cluck Cluck Sew. So I linked to it in the blog post that is in the description of today's post. So you can head on over to the blog 
get the link for this pattern as well as the new cutting dimensions and yardage requirements that you need if you just want to make a table runner instead of the whole quilt. So that's where that started. All right, Ella would embroider above and below the football. So um, lots of areas for adding your great machine embroidery. All right, I bought two of the Embroider Buddy animals for baby gifts. That's right. So we also have, um, along with, you know, these sports themed ones, we also have teddy bears and dinosaurs and um, hedgehogs and uh, sea otters. And there's all kinds of Embroider Buddies and they all zip open so that you can access the tummy of the animal and put a really cute design there um, or different areas of the particular animal. So um, we don't just have the sports ones. We have a lot of the other ones. Okay. When is the webinar for the t-shirt? All right. So our Sulky Perfect Tea webcast is happening on September 14th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. So you can register early and secure your spot grab up a kit. Um, if you don't get a kit, you're sure to want the pattern. So that's also available individually, um, but also as part of the kit. Um, here's what that pattern looks like when you're looking for it at sulky.com. And here are the kits. The kits also come with the pattern, as I mentioned. So you could choose from navy or white, um, our two most popular uh, colors for the shirt and then choose from hand or machine embroidery for your kit type. So four options there for you, um, and hopefully we're appealing to everyone. Also, the designs come in two different colorways, so that's why you're getting six spools of thread. The designs feature three colors, but you can mix and match from the color palette that we put together here, um, which it gives a little, little pop of color to your otherwise neutral t-shirt. All right, someone is asking for the serger event information again. Our serger session will uh, activate on September 27th. So you can purchase the serger session now. And then on the 27th, you'll get an alert email that tells you, hey, everything is ready for this session now. And you can dive right in and start watching all the video lessons, which are all on demand. So the Serger Sewing Session is not a live event. Um, it is an on-demand event with lots and lots of components that you can pick and choose how you want to absorb the information. And there's lots of printables and patterns and extra downloadables included as well. Uh, this one also comes with um, a, the pattern for those home decor projects I talked about earlier. Marcy wants to know how sheer is the fabric? I'm actually going to grab it for you so you can see how sheer it is. So I have both colors here. I kind of can't decide what I want to make my shirt out of. Um, so I'm probably just going to use both. So, um, it is, let's, I mean, it's always hard to tell here, but you cannot see through it, um, but it feels lightweight um, and it's definitely higher quality than the typical t-shirt knit you would buy, let's say, in your Target t-shirt. These are like the luxurious knit tees that are upwards of $50. Um, you know, if you subscribe to any of those wardrobe boxes um, and you get one of those shirts and you put it on and you're like, oh man, I really cannot justify a $68 t-shirt, um, but you go for it anyway because it feels that good, that's this fabric. It's MVC Micro Viscose Cotton. It has a good stretch and recovery to it. Um, you can see if I stretch it really far, you can see through it. But we are not going to be creating a t-shirt that is that tight where it would be stretched that much. Um, it takes embroidery very well. Um, and it's really great to sew. Here is the white 
and you can see I have my hand underneath it and you cannot see through it. Um, so it's, I would say, not sheer at all. The white has really great coverage. Now again, if I really stretch it far, still can't really see me through this white one. Um, but again, we're not making a tight t-shirt here. We're making a loose fit flattering t-shirt. Um, so I hope that that tells you. <laughs> I hope that gives you the info that you needed. All right. Great info as always. Thank you very much, Marianne. And I thank you all for joining me today on So What? I hope you learned a lot about some great fun football and sports themed projects that you can create this season and get on your sewing list of things to do. I also hope you have signed up for the Perfect Tea webcast. I'll be talking more in depth about Garment Sewing 101 and tools you need to have on hand if you want to dive into the world of garment sewing, things that'll make your life a lot easier. We'll be talking about those next week on So What? Um, also, just be aware of the Serger Sewing Session. As we get closer, I'll be talking about that more as well. Um, and thank you. Thanks for uh, spending your day with me here at Sulky. I appreciate you all. Again, one lucky viewer today who is watching, sharing, commenting, all of those good things. You are all eligible to win our Neutrals and Nutshells 12-weight cotton thread assortment or excuse me, 50 weight cotton thread assortment. It's uh, 12 spools, which is why I got confused there for a moment. So 12 spools of great sulky thread in this Neutrals and Nutshells palette. So give me all the likes, shares, comments, questions, and uh, looking forward to it as well. Thank you so much for joining. I will pick the winner um, in about 24 hours, I like to give everybody a chance to comment and share and all those good things. And uh, I always will uh, contact the winner, my own self, from my personal account. Um, so do not, um, you know, how do I put this lightly? There are scammers out there in the world of Facebook and they will try to contact you in Messenger and tell you that you've won and want to get all of your personal information. I do not do that. So you will know it's me um, and we'll leave it at that. All right. So not to end on a weird note or anything, uh, but <laughs> just letting you know that, um, you know, our neutrals and nutshell thread palette is the uh, great giveaway for today. Okay. Can't wait for the t-shirt class. Me too. Um, I think you'll all really enjoy it. I'm going to get to cutting out my pattern a little bit more and um, so that I can be ready to go as well. So have a wonderful rest of your day, everyone. Take care and we'll see you next week on another So What?